If you have your, your Bible with you, I want you to open to Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 20. And it says the following, then David returned to bless his household and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and she said, how glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovering himself. Most of you probably have heard this story before. And the story goes like this, that King David becomes a king and because of his passion for the presence of God, he decides to bring the ark of God into Jerusalem. At first time he does that, Uzzah tried to help the ark of God, it slipped and Uzzah died. And then the second time David realized the ark of God needs to be carried on the shoulders of the priests instead of the new carts which Philistines invented, he puts the priests to bear the ark and David who could have easily sat in his house and just watched the whole procession of how the ark is being carried and just enjoy the whole thing or get a DVD uh, you know footage off of it. David comes down from his throne, goes in the middle of that procession, removes his kingly garments and joins people just like everyone else dancing, clapping, shouting and getting excited for the things that God is doing in Israel. His wife, Michael, she's watching all of this, most likely from the balcony of their home, has a really good view of what's happening. And when a king comes into the house, she gives him her opinion of how everything happened. And she says the following, she says sarcastically, you know, look at you, look what you're doing over there. Your embarrassment. You're dancing. People think you're a fool. And then she says to say all of these things. His wife had a better view. But at the expense of her worship. She had a good view where she was at. She was a window watcher. David was a worshiper. God doesn't want us as Christians to be in church as window watchers. Who only have a good view instead of having a good worship. I want you to write this down. The difference between a window watcher and a worshiper. A window watcher always sees people. A worshiper seeks the presence of God. She was aware of people. She saw David. She saw all the things about people. David was obsessed with the presence of God and therefore he didn't see the things she saw. He only saw the presence of God. If you come to church and you constantly see mistakes of people, you're a window watcher. If you come to church and you can't worship because so many hypocrites are here, you're a window watcher. Have you noticed that the Walmart has hypocrites? How do I know that? People who shop at Target and Walmart are hypocrites because they're not committed to Walmart alone. <laughs> Starbucks has hypocrites because people drink coffee from roasters, Dutch bros, hungry gen coffee and then go to Starbucks. That's hypocrisy. <laughs> but when you go to Starbucks, you don't go there because of hypocrites. You go there to get your coffee. Come on somebody. Are you with me? See, one lady came to a pastor and says, it's a pastor. Your church has a lot of hypocrites. I'm leaving. Your church has young people sitting on their phones and texting and on their social media. When you're preaching, I'm leaving. Pastor, your church is a bunch of people who are greedy and they're there to show off. I'm leaving. And the pastor said, okay, you can leave. But before you do, can I ask you to do something? And she said, what would you have me do? He gave her a glass of water, filled it to the full. And he says, I want you to walk with this glass around the church four times. And then bring me the glass and you can leave. She walked for four times. She came back to the pastor. She said, Pastor, I did it what you asked me. I walked for four times. He said, well, you're free to go. But before you go, let me ask you a question. Have you noticed any hypocrites as you were walking around the church? She said, no, Pastor, I haven't. Have you noticed anybody texting? And being distracted as you walked around the church. She says, Pastor, I haven't noticed that. Have you noticed any haters around the church while you were walking? She says, no, I haven't. He says, isn't that interesting? Did you know why you didn't notice that? Because you were focused on your water. 
See, when you come to church and you focus on God, hypocrites will always be there. You just won't notice them. See, many of us, we come to church and we notice everything and everyone except God. The church was never meant about people. It was meant about His presence. And that's why you're coming here today. I want to ask you this, is that when you come here, God is giving you this. Focus on Him, everything else will not matter. And you will realize the very hypocrisy you hate in other people, you have a little bit in yourself. The little things that you hate about other people, when you be very honest, you have a little bit of that in yourself as well. We all need the grace of God. And the way God changes us is if we focus more on Him instead of people. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Worshipper focuses on the presence. Window watcher focuses on people. I want you to see the second thing is that a window watcher worships dignity. A worshipper worships divinity. This woman, she worshipped dignity. Her biggest problem with David was the fact that he became undignified. In a sense, he didn't act like a good king because he lowered himself down from the status of how the king's supposed to act. I want to let you know something. We love dignity in here, but we only worship divinity. We love getting nice, dressed up and everything, but when God's presence hits, the white jeans go on the floor. We love the idea of looking good and all of you ladies came with your mascara, you came with your mask, and not mask, you came with your makeup. <laughs> Sorry, I don't wear that, so I don't know how to pronounce it correct. With your, with your uh, mascara, right? You came with your, uh, with your makeup, that's what I was trying to say. Not with your mask. So you come, you know, your hair is beautifully done and you come in and you know, everything is so polite and everything. But you have to understand, you're not here. This is not a talent show. This is not American Idol. This is not a runway. This is a place for the presence of God. It means if the spirit is moving, that makeup better be flashing down. If the spirit is moving, listen, your hands better be going up. Oh, but it's kind of hot. I'm sweating. You are here to worship divinity. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I want us to be a church. That is free to worship. I believe when we are going further as a church there will be moments during worship where we're all going to be on our knees. There will be moments during worship where some of you you will lay on the aisle prostrate. You've never done this in your life and you will never do it again after that time but it will be a moment and you will feel heaven coming down. As even we were worshiping today I, I would close my eyes and I saw for at least five minutes I saw this image where almost like a curtain of heaven was just you know like when you put something in the curtain it starts to kind of go down and it starts to come close. Something inside of me just, just snapped. It's just a bawling on the inside. You know like when it's one thing when you're crying with your tears. It's another thing when it's your spirit is groaning. That's the feeling, that presence of God. I know it's just a foretaste. Church, God is going to do incredible things. But we got to stop being window watchers. We got to stop being spectators. We got to stop coming and just looking at people. We got to seek the presence of God. Come on somebody. Any worshipers we have in this house this morning. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I want you to see thirdly, not only a window watcher, somebody who's focused on dignity instead of divinity. A window watcher is always obsessed with how of worship. And the worshiper focuses on who of worship. A window watcher doesn't have a problem with worship. It just has the problem with the way the hungry generation worships. Usually has the problem with volume. It has the problem with why are they so loud? Why are they jumping? Why are they, wh why do we have this and that? When the watcher rarely has a problem with worship, they just hate the style. The style to them is everything. A worshiper switches the styles every day. Because to him and to her, the object of worship is the focus. Not how I worship him. Pharisees had problem with style. They came to Jesus and said, Jesus, why are the kids so loud? And Jesus didn't come and say, okay, get the kids quiet, get the kids quiet. Jesus looked at the Pharisees and he says, if they will be quiet in their crazy style, rocks will cry out. He says, and the reason they're praising is because you're not. 
God doesn't want us to obsess with style. Do we have to have, you know, a decency and good sound and good appearance? A hundred percent. But when the presence of God comes in, all of that has to go out of the window. You got to be lost in the glory of God. And this is where you find yourself. You find the glory of God. Come on somebody. You know, if you think heaven is going to be a place like a Presbyterian church, I'm going to surprise you to tell you that a heaven is not going to be like charismatic, Baptist, Pentecostal or Catholic church. Heaven is going to be so crazy, right in front of God, there's going to be no worship leaders. There will be animals you've never seen in your life. These animals have eyes all over them and these animals worship God. Now imagine if I would come to worship today and brought three dogs. And just me standing there say glory and three dogs is standing right beside me you'll be like what is wrong with pastor Vlad <laughs> heaven didn't have hymns it has animals right in the middle of worship angels sing only one song for those of you who come sometimes you're like man why is that why can they learn more verses one verse holy 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 can you imagine for eternity repeating one word I want to tell you something if you're not ready for what God is doing here it will be difficult to get adjusted in what God is going to do in heaven get ready to worship wild crazy passionately learn to worship God with everything you got because it's about the spirit of worship not the style of worship somebody give God praise in this house this afternoon hallelujah know I, I love right now that we have these little praise breaks during the message it gets me to catch my breath and maybe some of you come in is like what is this why are they clapping they're not clapping for me and they're not clapping for you we are getting excited for Jesus amen and I want to tell you something don't trip over that don't swallow that and simply say listen I'm excited that they're excited for Jesus because it's not about the style but we've always dreamed and it's always going to be our goal to have a passionate and excited church whether it's the first service or the second service why because Jesus gave his all the father gave his all we have a great future God is doing already some things right now and we are not a dead church we are not a quiet church we are excited church passionate church powerful church a vibrant church a church that will shake the gates of hell come on somebody hallelujah right come on Jesus you know I understand probably why this woman Michael she was so passive she's been through a lot Michael let me give you just a little biography of Michael I think she could qualify to beat every TV show in Hollywood about the housewives of Beverly Hills the housewives of Atlanta the housewives of Orange County and every other TV show that involves housewives this girl had so much drama they have enough script for 10 seasons of 24 episodes let me give you in a nutshell in 60 seconds her drama at a young age she meets this good-looking very famous charismatic passionate boy his name is David she falls in love with him they get married the moment they get married David has a lie about him from her father that he is trying to conspire to take the throne so she pretends he's dead and releases him David is on the run she loses her husband things go from bad to worse her dad develops a mental disorder her dad becomes to have episodes in which he starts throwing not darts but spears at his children now talk about problem in your family when your dad throws stuff at your, at your kids to kill them he has episodes where he goes on a killing spree and kills over 70 prophets at one time he starts talking to a witch and she already has a trauma because her father is going through a really difficult time and the really things go really bad when her dad and most of her siblings they die in the war and then she gets the update on his death and finds out he didn't die he committed suicide talk about pain talk about heartbreak seven years later her oldest brother who is the reigning king gets his head cut off talk about trauma 
and then when her life is already settled with her new husband she finds out that David is the king who is her ex-husband and David refuses to become a king until he gets her back as his wife now you already got the same bank account with your current husband you're going to the same gym you already have a same retirement fund your life is with the new husband for 10 years and the boy you fell in love with in your high school is a king and he says divorce your husband and you're coming with me oh and I'm a king you have no choice now talk about drama that's why I told you it could fill up 10 seasons of 24 episodes in every Hollywood TV show so I understand why she was passive she's been through stuff she's been through trauma and drama I want you to remember this don't let the drama in your family the trauma of your past make you passive and a spectator in the house of God and steal you from being a participator in what God is doing today in this house some of you you're coming from churches where you've been hurt some of you you're coming from places where you've been abused maybe maybe you are burned out you every load of the church was placed on you and you snapped and you come into church today maybe to hungry generation you're like I love here but I don't want to do anything I just want to come and receive I want to tell you something be careful of being a spectator and don't let your past become an excuse why you're passive today people in your past might have hurt you but that's in your past when you let them make you passive now you're giving them more power that they don't deserve when you let your abusers the haters the people who cause you harm abuse your life maybe perhaps control your passion today you're giving them power not only to wreck your past but to limit your present don't get me wrong but the devil is a liar and I'm not gonna let nobody no hater no critic not what happened to me when I was eight and not what happened to me I was 13 not some issues and some people who try to do this nobody deserves to have the power to control my present they might have taken my past but nobody is gonna limit my present because my present is gonna be unleashed by the Holy Ghost by the power of God by the presence of God and by my purpose I only have limited amount of time to be on this earth. I can't live limited today because what somebody did 10 years ago. I gotta snap those chains. I gotta break those hurts. I gotta cancel the trauma and the trauma and be a participator of the move of God. Be a participator of the move of God. Sometimes I meet people, they're like, I used to lead ministries in my old church. And I said, what do you do now? Nothing. Why? I'm recovering five years of doing nothing is not recovering you're being controlled by your burnout today I want to burn out your burnout today the reason we fast is that I get burned out just like everyone else I get hurt just like everyone else I get disappointments and sometimes they come upon you but what you do when you fast and when you pray you go into the furnace of the Holy Ghost and say Holy Ghost create within me a new heart restore my soul God give me the passion I had when I was 13 give me the fire that I had when I was 20 I had nothing but I only had you but I knew how to pray I knew how to break through I knew how to fast my way out of my situation and God today I ask you set my life on fire again I don't want to be controlled by my past come on somebody Jesus the mercy Woo. my God you can live your life burning for the Lord all the time if you have moments where he sets you on fire again and those moments are moments of prayer consecration and fasting sometimes you don't experience that in the moment of prayer and fasting but it's afterwards David had the same drama and trauma in his life but unlike Michael David said this God has called me God loves me I refuse to be passive toward God because Saul made my life hell for 15 years Saul is dead he has no power over me 
I'm going to be a man after God's heart when I was 15. I will be a man after God's heart when I'm 35. And when I get 60 and 70, I will write psalms as a deer pants for living water. So my soul thirsts for you, God. I desire to see your glory and to see your power in the sanctuary. Whatever drama, trauma, hurt and pain, hang up and habits that I have had in my life, I'm going to leave that beside to passionately pursue God. Amen. Are you with me, church? I want just to see as we're going a little bit further bringing this message toward the end in 2nd Samuel chapter 6 verse 23 I want you to see this therefore somebody say therefore. therefore therefore Michael the daughter of Saul had no children to the day of her death I want you to see that Michael unlike probably any woman in her day or any woman at all she was very strategically I want you to see these three things that was happening to her one is she was the daughter of a king she was positioned for kingdom secondly usually people who become daughters of the king almost never become wives of the king because if the new era comes in the new kingdom wipes out the other one she moves from being a daughter of the king where God strategically positioned her and she becomes a wife of the king. She becomes a partner in the kingdom. And there was one more step God had for her where God wanted her to become a mother of the king. Unfortunately, she was a daughter, she was a wife and the Bible says therefore indicates. It's not a coincidence she didn't produce a king but therefore signifies because of her passive attitude toward God even though she was the luckiest woman in the world to have been daughter and the wife of the king but the passiveness blocked her productivity where she couldn't produce what she was created for to produce you can have gifts at your disposal that make people go crazy you can have connections in your life but you yourself if you want to produce you gotta have passion come on, come on. you can have a last name that is famous in town you can have education and more degrees than a thermometer but in order to produce you gotta have passion come on. you gotta have passion as a church guys we have been positioned by God for a revival amen, amen. Yeah. and one of the reasons I know we're positioned by God for revival is because the leadership of our church, the pastors, the, the leaders of our church, they are for revival. I go to churches and I preach a lot of times and I see young people are saying this, Vlad, our leadership controls us. They, they don't want us to go further. I said, we have another problem. Our leadership pushes us <laughs> and drives us forward. They said, man, we wish to have your problem. And we are blessed because we've been positioned for revival. Our generation is expecting us also to bring revival. I've been positioned. Somebody say positioned. positioned. Touch your neighbor say you've been positioned for revival. The fact we had building paid for for over 15 years by Head Start every month indicates to us God strategically positioned us for the move of God in our city. Amen somebody. Amen. Secondly we have become partners with revival through different men of God I cannot tell you how many people come to us and they say this, how in the world did you get the pastor so and so to come into town? Just last week had somebody meet with me, a pastor says, how in the world is Andres Busoni coming to your church? People always say this, how in the world? Because see, when God positions you, he begins to connect you. Oh. I believe in partnering with revival. I believe in being like a wife of the king in a sense that you might not have it yet but you are watching it on YouTube from someone else. You might not have it yet but you are listening on the podcast of what God's doing somewhere else. You are reading the books. You are sowing financially because where you want to go you gotta sow. Where you want to grow you gotta sow. Somebody say amen. Even, even this week there was a, a group that came from Sacramento they drove 12 hours during Memorial Day with a small bag of merchandise and money to come to our ministry at 8 30 in the morning to meet for one reason they say we want to partner with your ministry we want to sow because this is where we want to go 
we've been doing that I do that every single month I bring my tithe to the church as I did it today but yesterday I sow a large sum of money every single month into revivals to me I don't want to die with a fat account I want to die with a big difference I'll rather bring a million people to Christ than die with a million dollars in my account who cares from that I want to sow where I want to go I want to sow what I want to grow somebody say amen and so partnering with revival is so so powerful but see she was a partner she was positioned and she still failed to produce because though she was positioned and she knew the right connections there was no passion when everybody was fasting she was feasting when everybody was praying she was straying when everybody was seeking God she was looking at what people think of her she had a passivity and the Bible says and therefore she couldn't produce what I do not want about our church is that I want us to have the greatest man of God in in the world visit our church and our church have nothing I'm not talking about having the largest church in town though I know God has that for us you can have a big church we want to have a big impact through our church the size of our church is going to be determined by God but we're going to see thousands locally and millions globally but we want to see many people impacted by the power of the gospel you saw something happened last week when we had a prayer line and a few weeks ago I already felt in my heart that God is shifting our ministry. God is doing a shift in our ministry. We're stepping into a new season. The way we prayed with the anointing water for last four years, we prayed faithfully every single month. People made fun of us because this is what you have to understand. David was in revival. He had a critic. He lived with a critic. The price of revival is always being okay with being criticized. The moment you start living to tailor to the critics, you lose the revival and they stop criticizing you. Why? Because critics only exist if you're doing something right. If you stop doing something revolutionary, critics, critics are out of job. So we actually provide jobs for the critics. When you create revival, you create a job for a critic. Never tailor to a critic because if you tailor to a critic, they'll stop criticizing you because you stop having revival. We want to have a revival and let the critics say what they want to say. Caravan goes and the dogs bark. That's how always it happened and some people will live off of our success of your success just like a mosquito mosquito lives off of your blood if you die mosquito dies too because it has nothing to it has nothing to bite and so that's how some people live and so people criticize us for the anointing water and we didn't stop praying with the anointing water because of what people said and to us the approval of people uh, means not very much our goal is to serve people and please God come on somebody are you with me but last Sunday we prayed without the anointing water what happened I feel in my heart that as the Lord was with the anointing water for the past four years I read the scripture in Joshua where God says to Joshua as I was with Moses and Moses was the man of God God says as I was with that guy no one like him I mean he is it and God says to Joshua now I am with you and you will take people where Moses couldn't and I feel that in my heart last Sunday we shared it with the guys that as God has been with anointing water for the last four years the training wheels came off last Sunday God is with you God is with me and he will take us to places even the anointing water didn't take us because it will be his anointing somebody say amen somebody give God praise for the new season if you are ready for what God is gonna do give God a shout in this place right now Jesus hallelujah 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 the Lord is shifting a season in our church and I believe he's shifting a season in your life amen amen as I'm bringing this message to an end I want to tell you something that the passion we have to have for the presence of God it has to be real I'm currently myself on the third day of fasting and I'm going to continue that with all of you till Wednesday for one reason I've stepped into a new season and I felt that I feel that our church stepped into a new season and I don't throw these words 
in haste. I don't throw this word just to say new season, new season. I genuinely believe in my spirit something already has shifted. It requires higher dedication of me than ever before. It requires a deeper walk with God and deeper humility of me than ever before. It requires more fasting for me than ever before. Well, it will go in less to gym now. Praise Jesus. <laughs> I was looking at my lawn yesterday and I realized it was so dry. And I looked at the clock that was set up, the little thing that determines how much water gets sprayed on my lawn. And I realized my lawn was set up on a spring schedule where it was not hot. So it was watering the grass every two days. When the climate shifted, it required more water. But I was still on the water system of spring and my grass was dying. Sometimes your destiny is drying up because you are on the dedication plan of your previous season. When you step into the promised land, God cuts off the, the, the manna and God says you need to get circumcised and you need to dedicate your life to God in a new, in a fresh way. You got to release the passion for the Lord. Your roots got to be moist your spirit gotta be hungry for God as though because you're stepping into something new you're gonna kill your new season if you have old habits the old habits might have been fine for your old season when you were in college but you are a different person now you are in the new season now and God wants you to wet your roots passionately with fasting with Bible reading with reading of the books and podcasts why because you're stepping into a production hallelujah thank you Jesus hallelujah thank you God there is a new season that is coming to our church but this new season will require us to answer the call and say Lord I will be hungry for you I will pray I will fast I will let go of my things that are not from you in my life I will disconnect my heart from the idols that I have treasured and built because this new season requires my full devotion to you you may say well this is great lot for you you're the pastor yeah go fast isn't that what the church pays you for I want you to see this this woman her passiveness though being spiritual affected her life physically she was not a pastor she was not a bishop but being passive as a woman limited her as a woman if you just think that well Vlad you don't understand my business the fasting and prayer the passion for the Lord really just living holy it doesn't affect my business I need to be connected I need to be educated I need to have the capital I need to have this my physical re my physical problem has nothing to do with my spiritual problem you will be surprised how much your spiritual life affects your physical life how much your spiritual lack of desire for God affects your marriage, even your health, even your finances. I'm not saying in all the cases it's like this, but in our case as Christians, our spiritual life has more effect on our physical life than we ever imagined. Amen. God wants to do miracles and incredible things. But right now we need to take a decision and say, Lord, I want to be passionate for you. Right in front of you, you have the little paper slip for prayer and fasting. I want you to pull it out right now. I don't want this to be a message where we just shout and scream. I want this to be a message where we act and we take the step forward. For those of you who call this home, this church their home, your church right now for the next three days is going to be around the ark praying and fasting. Can I ask you to step down from your window and join us? Can I ask you to stop just watching? Let's get engaged. Maybe you can do all three days of fasting. Do five. <laughs> it gets easier after three days anyway. And so and maybe you can do one hour of prayer. Do three. It's completely fine. You won't get hurt. I want you to be engaged. There was a boy in the New Testament. When the Apostle Paul was preaching, he sat on the window just like this woman. And he fell asleep and he fell off the window and died. I don't want us to sit and window watch then slip and fall asleep spiritually and spiritually die God wants to wake up your spiritual life today so that your physical life gets changed a young man we led to the Lord many years ago reached out to me two weeks ago 
and you said, Vlad, my whole life is falling apart. My marriage is falling apart completely. I just found out that the person I've been married to just left me and gave me divorce papers and doesn't want to do anything with me. And she said, my whole world is falling apart. This Wednesday, he came to youth service. He ran up to God and he, he came to me before the service and he says, I'm here today because he said, Vlad, I walked away from Christ. I said, I was under the impression that you actually went to another church. He said, in four years, I went to a church only two times. He says, I left God. And he says, I came here today. He says, yes, it took this to wake something inside of me. But he says, I'm I can't wait for, he was an hour before. He says, I can't wait for the service. And he says, you better give an altar call because I'm ready. He came there to the front. He broke down. I get a text message after the service. And he said, for four years, I missed this. He says, yes, my world is still shattered right now. But he says, I know why it was shattered. Because my spiritual world was ignored completely. I thought because I have a good job, great house and everything, I could build my life. And I realized that I needed God in my blessing as much as I needed Him when I wasn't blessed. And he says, now I'm going to do it right. I'm going to get right with God. I'm going to seek His face. Today he needed to go to work. And he texts me, he said, Vlad, I'm showing up only for 30 minutes because I have to work afterwards. But he said, I'm committed. I'm giving myself over to God. If you're sitting on a fence right now, I want to electrocute that fence and say, jump down, join us. Let's live in the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let's not watch and speculate. Let's participate and be involved in what God is doing. Come on somebody. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. On your way out today, my sister will stand there with a basket and will receive those little paper slips so she can fill in the calendar over there. But the rest of us, I want us to rise to our feet right now. Thank you for watching and listening to this message. I know that it's been a blessing to you. Your faith has been stretched and you've been positioned to receive from God. We're about to go into a time of prayer where you will receive prayer for your current situation. I believe God will bring healing and God will bring freedom as you will pray along with us. I'm so excited to announce that I'm actually releasing a book called Break Free, where I will share in the book of what we went through as a church, what I went through as an individual, as a pastor, as a minister, and how to find freedom and how to keep that freedom. And so on the link below, there is a link where you can find promotional material, you can share on social media and help to get the word out. I would really appreciate that. And right now, having your heart ready, let's go into the time of ministry where you will receive from the Lord. Let us lift those hands right now. Just begin to. His presence is already here. His glory is already here. I feel like God is bending heaven and is slowly coming down on earth now. We're coming to a season. We're coming to a time where heaven and earth in our worship is going to come in one place. We will actually hear angels sing. We will see. The Spirit of God moving even during worship, but people will be healed, but people will be delivered, but demons will cannot will not be able to stand because God is taking throne on our worship. Come on, raise your hand, open up your spirit, say Lord, breathe on me. Spirit of God. Jesus name. 
we've gathered here today and today is a special service today is a special day today is the day where we are believing and expecting and contending for miracles I mean we're expecting the things that are impossible the things that are unreal because they've been promised to us, to us by God in Jesus name can somebody say amen I want to let you know today that the Holy Spirit is present here and therefore you and I have the right to pray bold prayers today we have the right to expect the impossible today not just not just natural not just tumbling feelings not just tears rolling down your eyes not just butterfly feelings in your stomach but I'm talking about a real raw power of God manifesting in our midst in Jesus mighty name come on somebody we've been praying and praying and praying and fasting that this will be the arena of healing and the arena of freedom and I believe church we are stepping into that in Jesus name I want to challenge you right now that today to pray and we're gonna pray in just a moment we're gonna pray bold prayers and we're gonna see heaven respond to the bold prayers that we're gonna pray because when the Holy Spirit is present nothing is impossible amen I shared a story about a young girl in Africa there was a situation where a mother was giving birth to a child and during the childbirth the mother died and a little baby that was born she was born and her mother was just dead and it was very chilly it was very cold because it was the night and they had one hot bottle that contained hot water and as this little girl was receiving this little infant that just got born whose mother died was receiving this hot water to stay warm in the chilly night this bottle burst open and it broke hot water left there was no electricity there so there was no way to give hot water to this baby and this baby would suffer because of the chill of the night and they gathered together a missionary lady gathered together around this young infant and a little orphan 10 years old started to lead the prayer and this is how she prayed this prayer she said Lord we don't have much time we need the bottle it has to be bottle that contains hot water and since the little girl lost her mom since you added Lord make sure you add a toy to the little baby now they were in away in Africa there was no connection there to other villages there is no shipments there they were coming in for the last six months there was no way this could happen and she said God we don't have till tomorrow we need it today the missionary lady looks at that little orphan and says I she said I couldn't say amen to that prayer because this prayer doesn't make sense but the little orphan did not know about prayers that don't make sense two hours later arrives a 26 pound shipment from Ireland that was shipped six months prior on the top of the shipment it has a bottle for hot water on the bottom of the shipment it has a toy for a little girl and the rest of it has necessities see God already had a miracle on the way to this missionary family it took the boldness of a little orphan to pray not ordinary prayers but to pray bold prayers and God responded yes he did it in two hours and for some of us here he'll do it in two minutes God respects your boldness God respects your faith God loves when you challenge you when you challenge him with your boldness come on somebody are you with me church we are in this room this morning and we are believing for God to move but I want you to look at your faith and express your faith by being bold in Jesus name whatever is impossible the word impossible actually can be broken down to impossible your miracle is possible the answer to prayer is possible we are going to be praying for healing the reason why as a church we're going into fasting tomorrow and on Tuesday and Wednesday we're believing there is a greater measure of the healing of God that exists for our church for our community and for our individual lives can somebody say amen we believe there is a greater there are greater things that are going to be taking place the reason why we are showing this is to get your appetite wetted to get your hunger stirred that nothing is impossible to God if you have made an agreement with your problem and said well this is what it's going to be I hope to disturb that agreement today I hope to make you leave you a little bit frustrated that you will begin to see God your life is too short to live a mediocre natural life God has given his spirit who raised Christ from the dead he could begin to raise things up from the dead in your life in Jesus name amen 
I had a, I heard a story this week and before we pray heard a story of most of you know this surgeon and Ryan this is the time where you can post that picture um, the ben Benjamin Carlson Carl uh, the one who was running for the president Carson he was the fourth uh, running mate for the Republican Party Benjamin grew up in Chicago and where he had a problem with poverty and but he was a really brilliant student he graduated with high honors got the best uh, SAT score in 20 years in any public school in his city genius but he was so poor he could only afford $10 application fee for Wales, uh, uh, Yales for that university he applied and because he was so smart what they did is they gave him a full ride scholarship to that college now the miracle is this he wanted always to be a doctor he wanted to work in very very specific cases uh, being a doctor he needed to finish and pass a chemistry class in that college for which he was struggling with his grades were pretty low in that class if he wouldn't pass the chemistry test he wouldn't be able to go into the degree of being a doctor he decides to take one night, the whole night, to study for the final exam, which will give him a break. The problem is that he prayed before that exam. He said, Lord, I just ask you for your grace and for your strength. And he fell asleep. Instead of studying all night, he slept all night. But this is what happened. During the sleep, God came to him in a dream and showed him a board where all the questions will be on the exam. And answered all the questions. He said this was like a twilight zone. The next morning he gets up to take the test and he says I realize every question that's on the test has been shown to me in my sleep and he passed that thing. He went to be a doctor. He's now he's been voted as one of the most successful neurosurgeons in America at the age of 31. He would separate two people's brains that were born together. He would do a surgery on a fetus. He would do things that are mind-blowing. He received awards. Today he's a secretary of housing and urban development. And this man says, he says, if it wouldn't be for supernatural intervention of God, he says, I wouldn't be who I am today. Nothing is impossible to God. Somebody say amen. Whether it's school, whether it's career, whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, when people have said no, when the doctor has said it's not possible, God says, watch me. I still have one more move. Somebody give God a shout of praise. We serve a miracle making God. We serve a healer God. We serve a savior God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, every hand raised right now. For the next 30 seconds, I want us to declare this place to be a place of miracles. Come on, let's just begin to pray. Lord, we declare when people step in this place, they experience your impossible. Lord, if people can come in contact with disease and they become sick, when they come in contact with us, they become healed. Lord, your power is in this place. Begin to say, Lord, activate me for supernatural. Activate me for miracles right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask you that right now there will be an activation for the supernatural. The hands we are lifting up, touch them right now. Touch these hands. Let these hands travel for your power let these hands carry your fire let these hands carry your anointing to the ends of the world God let this voice that we are lifting right now become a vehicle of your glory and become the vehicle of your power in Jesus mighty name we pray with faith being in this room right now I feel the leading of the Lord to pray today differently for healing if you are ill or if you have a pain in your body right now you came with sickness no matter how many times you pray we would like to minister to you today corporately and if you are that person who say Vlad I'm in need of prayer just raise your hand if you are in need of prayer for healing just raise your hand and just hold it up for just just a second if you see someone beside you nothing is impossible in the first service God moved powerfully people are being healed if you see somebody has a hand raised especially the leaders and the altar call team could we surround them right now if you're standing next to someone with a hand raised ask them what is their pain and begin to pray bold prayers right now Tim there's a gentleman behind you and so just just look around those of you who are believers in Jesus if we can have somebody to pray for Ina every single person and the rest of you church if you're not praying I want you to just pray in the Holy Spirit because miracles are gonna happen today in this place in the name of Jesus Christ right now pray bold prayers don't ask God 
speak healing and for those of you who are watching us on live stream right now we're going to pray right now for God's healing to begin to come in Jesus mighty name for God's healing to begin to manifest right now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus for those of you who are watching us on the live stream right now we speak God's healing let God's power come right now where there is disease let God's power come right now where there is illness that pain in your body we curse it right now in Jesus name we cancel every assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ let God's anointing manifest as God's Spirit is moving here right now and people are receiving prayer receive your miracle in Jesus name receive your miracle in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ in Jesus mighty name those of you who received the prayer right now right there this prayer was being prayed for you boldly God's Spirit is in this room he's ministering to you thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come.